So one thing I forgot about the, the last slide was that, uh, so let's write it here. Last slide, example three, uh, was the RN. So since we were looking, it was a common emitter, we were looking at the base from the input. So the input impedance would have been R pi plus whatever I see in the emitter times beta plus one. So, and the resistance that they had in the emitter was REQ. So you had the expression for REQ, this would be the expression for input resistance. Now let's look at a much more complicated kind of an example. So this is the kind of example that you might actually get in a test or a quiz. So compute the voltage gain and the output impedance of the circuit depicted below, right? And uh, we're assuming that there is there is an early effect, right? So we're early, like we do have this or not, okay? So looking at this circuit, it's actually pretty complicated. It looks weird, but then knowing that in the AC analysis, this capacitor becomes short circuit, things become a little bit more simple because then I know that this R2 is gonna be between the emitter here and ground, right? So I can make it in parallel with RE, right? Because that's also between emitter and ground. Also R1 becomes from base to ground. So I just put it here, right? So now the circuit looks a little bit better. It, it is a little bit more familiar to me. And this R0 is just there to remind you, it's not the real circuit, it's just the, the it's not a real resistor. Uh, it's just the resistor that we consider in the AC analysis, but it's just there to remind you that um, we do have the R0, okay? So what kind of a amplifier is this? Well, input is actually connected to the base, output is taken from the emitter, so this is a common collector amplifier, okay? And for common collector, we know that the gain is gonna be uh, beta plus one times Re over beta plus one times Re plus R pi, right? But then that's only valid if the input is applied to the base of the common collector. Right now, the input is not exactly at the base, we have a fraction of input coming to the base. So we have to actually calculate first. Again, I'm gonna find a way to simplify this to, or to reduce this circuit to something that I know. I'm gonna define this Vm, and I'm gonna say that I know V out over Vm is going to be equal to um, beta plus one times Re, which is the, whatever I have at the emitter, which is right now is Re in parallel with R2, over the same term, plus R pi. Okay, good. Now, what is Vm over V in? This is one of the common mistakes that people do, that they just see R1 and Rs and write R1, over R1 plus Rs, because they think this is the uh, voltage divider. Uh, and that's that's wrong. Why? Because, well, I have some resistance here. Looking into base, I have some resistance. So my circuit is not a simple voltage divider. My circuit looks like, from the V-in point of view, it looks like this. It looks like an Rs, an R1, and some resistance to ground. What is that resistance? It's I'm going to call that rm right and that rm i know how to write it i know that it is equal to the uh, base resistance so r well i don't have anything in the base so it's going to be basically r pi plus whatever i have in the emitter multiplied by beta plus one so it's going to be beta plus one times the re in parallel with r2 Oh, sorry, actually, this is in parallel with R2, and I forgot one resistor, which is R0, right? In parallel with R0. So basically, this RE represent all resistors from the emitter to ground, okay? So here I have an R0, therefore, similarly, I should have an R0 here as well. So this is going to be in parallel with R0, in parallel with R0, plus R pi. Okay, 
Now I have R pi plus beta plus one times R E in parallel with R two in parallel with R naught. So that's my R M. Therefore, my V M over V in is going to be not R one over R one plus R S. It's going to be R one in parallel with R M over R one in parallel with R M plus R S. Now V out over V in is just going to be multiplication of this fraction times this fraction okay i'm not going to rewrite it again so like if this is one and this is two v out over v in is just going to be one times two and by one and two i mean the fraction not just the denominator i hope that is clear now uh, the other question is that what is the output impedance of the circuit? Well, looking into the, looking from the output, let's see what do I see. Looking uh, basically from this this point to ground. So let's draw some line here. So R out is going to be on one hand I have this term R e in parallel with R two in parallel with R not right, but then on the other hand I have so all of this is in parallel with whatever I see looking up, which is to the emitter of Q1, which is 1 over GM1 plus whatever I have in the base divided by beta plus 1. What do I have in the base? Remember, I'm doing R out calculations, so V in is actually connected to ground. I have shorted that. So RS and R1 are in parallel. So I have R1 in parallel with RS, then divided by beta plus 1. So that's what I have as the R out of this amplifier. Okay. So again, I didn't draw small signal circuits. I didn't do any kind of KCLs or KVLs. All I did was actually trying to reduce or to simplify the circuit that I have to something that I know. So first thing first, I try to actually look at this and realize that this capacitor becomes short circuit in the AC analysis. So I'm going to have a circuit that looks like this, right? Let me actually erase these um, little arrows so that this cleans up a little bit. Then uh, looking at this circuit, I realize I'm dealing with a common collector. I could have actually said that I'm, I have a common collector even from this circuit because input is to the base, output is from the emitter. This is a common collector for sure. Now I have a common collector. I know the gain of a common collector looks like this, right? And then here beta, I know what it is. R pi, I know what it is. R e is whatever I have from emitter to ground, right? And then from emitter to ground, I have this RE, I have this R2, and I also have R0, which is, well, going to collector, but then collector is ground because, well, VCC is ground in the AC analysis. So these three are in series, sorry, in parallel, and I'm going to just basically write the gain similar to that. But they then, the, the other thing that I noticed is that the common collector gain is equal to this parameter, this, this, this equation, if input was actually applied to the base, right? So let's write it down. So the gain is equal to this if uh, V in was directly connected to the base, right? Meaning that there's no resistor involved. There's nothing between the positive terminal of V in and the base. So like if I had something like this, then I would have been done. Like that was my gain. But now because I have this resistor divider kind of a thing, I, I have to actually find out what is the VM over V in. So like what is the gain from V in to this point, right? Now, how did I calculate that? Using a resistor divider, but I noticed that uh, I don't have only R1 and RS. I actually have this RM, which is the resistance looking into the base. How do I find this? Well, I know that the resistance looking into the base is R pi, plus whatever I have in the emitter, which is RE, R2, and R0 in parallel, times beta plus one. Now that I have this, then, well, here is VM, by the way, and here is VN. So VM, VM over VN is just gonna be this, this uh, ratio that I wrote here, and then V out over VN is just gonna be V out over VM times VM over VN. For R out, I just did basically what I do uh, all the time. So uh, looking into here, I have these three res resistors in parallel. 
and then they're in parallel with whatever I look up here, right? To, like to the emitter of the transistor, which is one over GM plus whatever I have in the base divided by beta plus one. 